a, a little trip on an aeroplane to uh, to uh, Alicante. Alicante, yes. yeah, where specific? You know, um, no, Alicante. just in that region, really, Steve. <laughs> um, and then uh, a bit of golf in the rain, judging right. by the weather forecast, right. and maybe drown my sorrows with a couple of cervezas. Okay. I think, yeah, couple that's, of that's my, my my plan, and hopefully come back in one piece. Really, that's that's okay. just all my uh, my my goals are for the for the weekend. When are you shutting off? By uh, first thing in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Right from. So an early start from Leeds Bradford. Still. Yep. So I'm all packed, a little bit giddy. Got your colourful shirts. Got my box shirts. Colourful shirts. Um, handkerchiefs for the head. What are you saying? <laughs> um, uh, handkerchief for the head. Oh my days. No, that's for another holiday. Um, no, uh, I've got colourful shirts, but you know, yeah, pretty standard stuff. Have thought about shorts. Sort of the weather doesn't look. I'm a sudden softy, so I'm a little bit concerned that it might be a bit cold for shorts. What what temperature are we looking at for Alicante in? Yeah, um, I nearly gave it away then. Um, <coughs> eight, 17, 18. That's not too bad. Mm, it's not short weather that for me. W- w- warmer than here, warmer than Hull. Yeah. yeah. Eight, eight, eight degrees out, so yeah, nice. Had the bomb heaters on. Oh my god. <laughs> Heat, heated seats come on automatically after, after if it's sub 10. Just well, come on automatically. Have you set that? You love a gadget, don't you? Absolutely uh, love a gadget. Oh, my car's automated, literally. <laughs> if I, 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 want, I definitely want a Tesla that could just take me to work, press a button. See ya. That is a wow. <laughs> really? Yeah, when you've got a heated uh, steering wheel. I have it set so it's pre conditioned temperature by the time I leave the house in wow. the morning. So it knows that I'll leave at 8, so it heats the car up. Nice 23 degrees, I think it was this morning when I walked in. It doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah, somewhere on the settings it'll be there. To play around with that. So you, you can set it for, yeah, so when you leave in the morning and when you obviously leave work on a night, it'll pre condition it hot or cold depending on the time of year. So it'll either turn the air conditioning on or not, you know. Very good. Steady. Good stuff, right? Shh. Well, enough about uh, your gadget, so we'll kick off. So, welcome to the third episode of. Tomorrow's workplace today, which is the the podcast from Spectrum Digital. Um, with me today, as usual, is uh, automation consultant Neil Wells and mm. another automation consultant, um, John Vanu. Um, afternoon, afternoon. And I'm Steve Motley, the head of digital uh, at Spectrum. So today, what we're going to be talking about? I thought we'd just kind of um, speak to you guys about what's going on in the world. You're obviously spending a lot of time out with clients. You know, you've got a lot about not knowledge about what's happening in in UK PLC, shall we say? Yep. So, I'll I'll target you first of all, Neil. So, over the last month, interactions with clients. What are the kind of themes and trends that you're talking about? What's going on? Yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag in the last couple of weeks. So, I've, I've spoke to a couple of customers that are um, very acquisitive. So, again, they're in an industry where they're, they're still um, spotting opportunities, and they've obviously got certain back in so that they're growing through acquisitions and I think okay. with any I suppose any downturn or any there's always an opportunity to grow there's other businesses that they're picking up where people have the feedback is that certain business owners that are owner operated for a number of years I don't know, 30 years they've just decided actually with COVID and whatnot I think I just want to retire so they're just yeah selling it um, selling it on and then yeah the, the company I'm dealing with they're, they're actively trying to acquire and grow um, is that because they're seeing businesses out there that are perhaps cheap, shall we say, because of what's been going on the last few years? Or I think so. Yeah. I think so. And I, and I think their, their model is to, to sort of have it as a group of businesses. Um, they're all independently trading, but the, the, the idea is obviously, yeah, as a buying group, as a collective, the, the strength in numbers, safety in numbers and all that type of stuff. But yep. um, it's intriguing what they said around, um, they, they're, well, what are they now? over 50 million turnover and it's that mindset of trying to move away from a, a family run business to sort of run as a, as a bigger business and, and put systems and processes in there to sort of make that step up um, so yeah the solution we're putting in there is going to help them with that but then on the flip side I've also seen businesses that have that have gone the other way and they've had to restructure and they've had to make, off a, make a lot of redundancies and, and again once you've, you've You've sort of taken it back to, um, I suppose, minimum level and, and sort of scale it right back. Again, there's opportunity there to 
to reassess processes, systems, and sort of say, okay, well, how can we put things in place so we can operate as lean as possible? Mm. And then, yeah, go again go from there. Go again, yeah. So the businesses that are struggling then, what what's causing that? Is that a hangover from COVID or are there other kind of factors in play? With yeah, the, the ones I spoke to, definitely uh, COVID's had a big impact that like they've been supplying into uh, different industries like hospitality for example um, so that one yeah more or less wiped out one side of the business I suppose the beauty of it is they have multiple businesses as part of a group so they could just yeah put more efforts into the other business um, one customer I spoke to down south he was supplying a lot of uh, janitorial products into the, the, the offices in London yeah. okay. and they closed all the offices so again um, but the irony was I think he, he lost one of his biggest customers um, in terms of revenue and turnover, but when he actually looked at it, it was actually costing him money to service it. Mm. So again, this working smarter, not harder scenario comes into yeah. play and actually looking at data, looking at, because um, again, everybody wants to sort of look after the customers. If they're continuing to place orders and the perception is that, well, yeah, they place the most orders, they must be profitable. Yeah. Is that, is that reality? It, yeah, it's this kind of revenue versus profit, isn't it? I'll, worked in businesses where you've got clients, customers that deliver big revenue numbers, but actually when you when you peel the onion, they're not making much on the bottom line. So yeah, I, I, can, I kind of get that. Um, okay, so COVID is a, is a factor. You'd have thought some of those businesses, particularly hospitality, would start to be bouncing back now. Is that is that kind of what we're seeing in the market? Or Yeah, I think so. I think, like you say, now that they have the particular outlets are opening that they're normally supplying to. Um, it's just that, yeah, certain businesses that maybe hemorrhage too much and, and had mm. to, yeah, cut the losses to a certain degree and then repurpose the funds in, in other directions. But, okay. but, yeah, like I say, it's, I'd say that's only 10%, maybe less than 10% of the conversations I have. Most of the businesses I've spoke to are, have been lucky that they've, they've managed to ride it out. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of have kind of still a little bit nervous. I was speaking to one company that, yeah, again, like everybody, just thought it would be a two, three month thing. You didn't think it would be a two year yeah. hangover. So it's kind of a, he's still um, a little bit nervous. His, his business hasn't got back to where it was. It's probably 20%, 30% below where it was previously. So again, he's still a bit nervous to invest. But I'd say the others, um, I've definitely decided, yeah, actually now is the time to invest in, in technology and, and yeah, try and systemise. Yeah, it feels like the, the world is getting back to a level of normality. I don't know about you guys. I mean, I went down to London two or three weeks ago and it felt busier. I'd heard stories about London being a bit of a ghost town and maybe it was 12 months ago, but actually it felt like it was getting a bit of traction. When, so when you're speaking to clients, are people they're back in the office now or is everything happening remotely still? Yeah, certainly from... <clears throat> the conversations I'm having, most people are now, you know, back in the office. Okay. Gone are the, uh, you know, the Teams or Zoom backgrounds. It's yeah. it's more, you know, we're there in a, a meeting room or, or, or whatever. Um, the sort of conversations I'm I'm having, it, it, similar to, to to Neil, but um, it it's a bit more sort of general. It's it's um, I've got some customers um, and and companies that I'm talking to that are looking at how they can become more efficient because actually you know the order books busy but the supply isn't there you know the whole at the moment you know supply chain is under pressure you know microchip um, factories out in the far east so they're kind of like well actually while the order book's really healthy but we can't deliver why why don't we start looking at, at you know what we can do internally to be to be more efficient be you know um uh, like you know, neil said you know work smarter not harder um, and then there's other things about you know um, you know I'm talking to, I've t spoken to a couple of CFOs recently and it's all about actually how can we um, work and introduce um, automation as early as possible but to ensure that you know the staff are um, in the conversation at the start so, yeah. it, so it's rather um, more about um, right we're thinking of looking to do this to help you do that. What are your, you know, what, what's your input rather than, and you know, we see it, I'm sure, you know, I, I know I do, but um, when a company will say, right, there we go, employees, ABC, we're going to give you that. And it's like, whoa, what's this? Yeah. 
you know, it's not like when you get a new company car or a new car, it's a new toy and it's like brilliant and you know you can set the heating you know for whatever whatever time of day it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's suddenly it's like well I'm being used to working this way. So the conversation I'm having is very much I think now that people are coming back into the office is to actually engage with them more and earlier yeah. as to how collectively they can work smarter and also be more efficient for the business. Yeah, I mean, we, we touched on it in a previous podcast, I think, now in terms of the most successful projects for us is when we get the people on the ground, people doing the job, get them involved in the process early, um, and they will help you deliver a project successfully, and they'll, they'll be bought into it because they're part of the journey as well. Yeah. On people, actually, I mean, I'll throw a few things at you that, that I'm kind of reading in the press, and, and occasionally when you let me out of the office speak to clients about, um, staff shortages, struggling to get hold of people doing yeah. the job. Is that something that you guys are seeing in the market, Neil? Yep, definitely. I think I've got a few sort of food manufacturers and, and people like that that normally would yeah, rely on quite a lot of um, sort of labour from European sort of marketplaces and it's just not there anymore. And it's mm. it's a strange one because <laughs> you're right, it's <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's quite a political one, isn't it? In regards to we've got a lot of people that are unemployed, but they don't want to do certain jobs, and yeah, it's. Uh, but it's how would you get around that? They're trying to upskill the teams that they have. Um, they're trying to be as lean as possible, um, but you're right. Sometimes demand. So I've got a friend of mine that's he works. He's got sort of temp agency as such. So he's flying. So again, people are trying to use temporary labour where possible, and 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 yeah, get that in there. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, from a technology point, I think the, all the uh, software companies we speak to, developers are just yeah, yeah. few and far between, aren't they? And uh, and then for some reason, none of them want to work in the office, and they all want triple the money now. So it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, an interesting one. Right. Again, we'll see how how that pans out. But yeah, well, uh, you're right. We went to that technology dinner in Leeds a couple of months ago, whatever, and yeah. The, the number one topic of conversation was how you get talent and how you keep hold of them once you've got them. And that was in Leeds, not, yeah. not even Hull. No, no. Yeah, we yeah. said that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. 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 You think it's hard in, yeah, in Leeds, but um, yeah. I, I've, I've had it with, um, with, a, with a client actually. We, we were discussing um, you know, a, a project and you know, general question you know, during the, the, the start of the meeting was you know, how are things going? And his actual first thing he said was, Staffing is a real issue, mm. um, and and it's more um, to do with getting people in, and then once you get them in, retaining them. Not, you know, I repeat what we said, but but for them, it, it's you know they're more in the you know the um, logistics side of things. Okay, um, and obviously there's a massive demand on uh, you know HDV, HDV yeah, yeah, anyone with an HDV license can write their own check at the moment, and yeah. then people that have you know. Are, Three quarters of the way through their training and becoming attractive, and and it was it was very much you know um, you know from their side it was how they how they can service the logistics companies that are their clients, mm. and he was he was saying you know it, it is a, becoming a massive headache, mm. and then it's all about how they as a as a supplier to these businesses you know as a partner can actually make sure that their level of service and expertise. Is of, of a you know of a minimum level that no you know the customer isn't affected yeah because obviously long term that's that's far from ideal yeah and obviously Christmas around the corner you know, the lots of businesses and a lot of businesses we deal with they will be ramping up staff the in fact they probably were ramping up about a month ago but yeah. that's probably why we're hearing a lot about it They're just struggling to get the numbers to to ramp up you hundred percent I mean even locally even things like um, my wife loves a next delivery and an Amazon delivery, and, and the, the, the amount of um, people that you see now. And again, I get it. As a if they have been lost the job, one of if they can got a car and they can drive, they can deliver parcels mm. type things. So you see yeah. people. Honestly, I've said I've seen pretty five series like mine pull up delivering parcels, and I'm thinking, what happened in your life for you to have to be now delivering these parcels? But again, it's needs must sometimes in these sort of situations, but. Um, that's a good point. On, on um, hotel and catering, I know a lot of restaurants that you know we speak to that are only kind of opening, only serving food Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's because the staff during lockdown have gone off and got jobs delivering for Amazon or doing something different. Yeah, and yeah, thinking yeah. actually, do 
do I want to be working, you know, until midnight yeah. every night? Yeah, My hairdresser did. He, he sort of, I was chatting to him and he, the barber shut and he was like, well, what else can I do? So he just got in his little car and off he went and got downloaded the app. And this is the thing with technology, they download an app and all of a sudden they can pick and choose the hours. They can they can select which jobs they wanted. They just had to go to the depot, pick yeah. it up, and drop it off. So they could do as many hours or as little hours as they wanted, and then yeah, they got paid. So the technology has allowed that to happen. But again, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting how you see it affect your personal lives, and then obviously in your business yeah. terms, it's like sometimes you find what I found with some of my customers and some of my prospective customers, they had used to have in like. Um, number of say uh, trade desks for example say they've got know, five or six trade desks there's one particular one I'm thinking of that had like 18 trade desks and they used to people just coming in ordering what they wanted or picking out of the shop but then when as soon as they couldn't come in the shop mm -hmm. there was like oh they didn't have any click and collect they didn't have any infrastructure for that so they were having to do like fun and collect and, and some of these places were out quite rural so it was like it was a corner shop as well as a big agricultural sort of shops it was like the only shop that, that needed to service that village and and but they couldn't go in the shop so it was a bit like oh, how, how do we do this so they were having to do fun and then, then they found it a nightmare and then they tried to introduce the sort of um, e-commerce or click and collect and again yeah it's about picking the right partner isn't it to be able to develop develop something and deliver it in a timely manner because it's still not up and running a year later and I know that's a big bugbear for them um, so yeah. it's the, the big winners from are witnessing from what's happened in COVID is the people who had taken that kind of digital transformation journey early, you know, done it years ago, the likes of I guess, Screwfix or Amazon yeah, yeah. or you know, we were talking about share prices at the beginning of this conversation. Um, the, oh, big, go there again. The, <laughs> the big technology companies are the ones whose share prices just absolutely rocketed over the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah they, they benefited. They predicted the trend, didn't they? And then, and then they went early, yeah. but then obviously COVID just accelerated that um, in, in, this, in one direction really so yeah and it will be going back to that staff shortage piece it'll be interesting to see how different industries deal with that and how they use technology and automation you talk about HGV drivers and we talked about Tesla earlier and actually Tesla talked about kind of big self-driving lorries and bringing them to market and you can kind of see industries looking towards technology to automate a lot of that stuff and reduce the risk of people I guess and not being able to find the right people. I think I watched something on YouTube the other night about Tesla because again there were I think you need to get out more. Yeah than it's just to get Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was doing my market research shall I get a model yeah. Y and then uh, they actually said um, that the roadster's coming out but then mm. the next thing that they're actually looking to enter the public transport mm. so buses and other yeah. bits and pieces and it's like wow okay and a lot they're talking about yeah lorries and and, and mini, like mini buses and things like that but um yeah it'll be quite crazy if that that happens because the level of technology they're building in there is is, is unbelievable but yeah. it's, it's going to happen when because the thing is the, the infrastructure is getting better so the 5g stuff's getting better so the internet things the whole i mean there's obviously been talk in the in the in the news around smart motorways and things like that and there was there was arguing for and against them and yeah, I mean, at the moment, we've still got human error. <laughs> so they're yeah. making a smart motorway, they've taken up the, the hard shoulder away, they've made it five lanes, but you still get people bro breaking down. Mm. And then they put a big X, you can't use the lane. Oh no, I'll just keep driving down it anyway. And people are dying, it's just nuts. But mm. it's human error, it's not system error. <laughs> well, it's uh, human error. And that's the thing, isn't it? And, <laughs> and in those circumstances, sometimes we touched on it a bit earlier about how, you know, unless you engage with people at the start of a project or, or an idea, it's difficult for it to, you know, get up and running and, and be successful. And it's a bit taking, you know, the idea of a smart motorway is, is actually a really good idea because there's more cars and there's more people and you just want to be, we all in this current in world, we want to be somewhere quicker than we used to be. You know, we want instant information. Um, so the idea of a smart motorway is, is brilliant. It's just like you said, the technology is, you know, it lets it down, but sorry, people let it down, but it's the technology that gets pointed at to be like, it's not Yeah, because the whole it. point is it's supposed to recommend, uh, I don't know, if, if there's a, 
a massive queue ahead it tries to slow the traffic down so it becomes a, a yeah. night, but people don't it says oh recommended speed 40 or 50 and like yeah whatever <laughs> just gas it towards a traffic that's the jam. thing isn't it people make mistakes yeah, everybody yeah. does and especially if you're doing I hate to link it back to what we do but if you're doing repetitive mundane processes day in day out then that leads itself to people getting bored and making yeah. mistakes yeah. and you know well, yeah, that's when you're not bored and, and the irony is you're right so if it's repetitive we go into autopilot. How many times yeah. have we done a task that you do over and over, and and it, our subconscious just takes over and does it because it's done it that often? But then, if you're not actually concentrating, mm. yeah, that there's quite easy to get distracted or press the wrong button or do something that then, yeah, it takes loads of hours down the line to unpick it, and uh, yeah, it causes problems. I was, right. I was reading something. Um, I can't read. <laughs> I, I was reading something uh, recently, and it was saying that. Um, I think it was uh, on on Forbes, but they were saying that by 2024, 75% of businesses will have uh, a digital transformation plan in place and the journey started. And one of the reasons, one of the things they sort of highlighted was all on the you know on the, on the subject that we we've, we've been discussing was all about employee engagement and you know. To, Draw people in using you know tech, technology, and um, you know I was talking to a, um, a prospective client, and one of the things that you know he's highlighted from a sales order processing perspective was that you know there are so many manual tasks involved, and they're doing high volumes mm-hmm. that a it's it's massively time consuming, you know, average like five minutes at, you know to to put an order onto their system. Um, and when you're doing hundreds and hundreds, that's an awful lot of time, manpower. When, in actual fact, when we were talking to them, we were in our heads thinking, do you know what, that's, that's mm. milliseconds that you know, some software could, could do. But interestingly, you know, was the fact that in a couple of years' time, a high proportion of businesses will have, a, will have or should have a, a plan in place. And one of the key areas is that employee sort of you know engagement and yeah. being happy. You use that, that phrase digital transformation which I think is a phrase we hear a lot but I think it's it's quite generic and I think to a lot of businesses maybe that scares them a little bit because it sounds yeah. quite grand but actually you know, we work with businesses and we we hope like to think that we digitally transform them uh, but a lot of the time it, it is quite simple stuff isn't it it's taking a document and digitizing it. Yeah, yeah it can be very very basic like you say it can just be and sometimes it's taking steps out of the process because the process that I obviously do a lot of is accounts payable. People are literally getting an email <laughs> that has a PDF and their file print. So they're taking a digital document, making it physical, wasting mm. print, wasting paper, and then having to then key it, it back, back in, in again or scan it back in again. Yeah. And years ago, I remember people having to print invoices on letterheads to then scan it back in again to then email to a customer. It's mm. like, well, just press well print and it'll just send it directly to them but but yeah you're right it's uh, it could be very very simple I mean I went to one place the other day and um, he said he, he didn't have the ability to format a document so he got a PDF coming and he, and he needed to sort of translate certain parts or be able to sort of edit certain parts of the document and he was literally losing business because of it and I was like well there's technology out there that allows you to edit and redact and, yeah. and but Sometimes people don't know what they don't know, and a lot yeah. of the time that they're experts in their own field, and they're good at looking after their customers and, and that type of thing. And a lot of this other stuff is left, yeah, for us to sort of make people aware of, yeah, what yeah. skills and what tools are that, out there. We use that phrase out of the art of the possible, and I think it's sometimes just informing people, helping people on what the art of the possible is. But you're right. I think the biggest thing around getting people to go from where they are to where they could be is that fear and that comfort of well that better the devil you know like it, it works and and okay we could be better and in the back of their mind they think yeah I know we could be better but this is how we're set up and we're doing all right and it's like yeah. and we talk about do you have the appetite to actually want to change and, and sometimes we need to yeah test people a little bit on that but because again you'll see people want to lose weight but do you really need to? Are you gonna? Are you actually gonna make the effort? Are you actually gonna yeah get up and make it happen, or are you just gonna talk about it? it it's that fear of the, the you know on the subject of weight <laughs> and weight loss. It's that fear of the pain that you have to go through to get to your goal. Yes. And it's a, a, I, I find it a lot. You know, 
the, the, the conversations that you have to start with, it's all like, that's brilliant. And then from their side, uh, you know, before you get, I get a chance to sort of explain the process and, you know, the time, you know, that we put in to understand and how we deliver it is very much around, um, there's always that, that fear, there's always that, oh, but it's going to be, it's going to be really uncomfortable for, you know, four or five months or, or whatever. And, and then, oh, what about month end and then year end? And there's all, there'll always be something that stops them actually going, in some cases, yeah. stops them actually going, do you know what, actually, yeah, it's going to be painful for three, four months, but actually after that, life's going to be so much better. We'll have much more visibility on what business is doing, how it's doing it, because we were saying about, you know, the simplicity of some of the solutions that we put in. Mm. Ultimately, all we're doing is allowing businesses to actually be clever with the data that they got stuck on a document. Mm. Yeah, and I think for me it's about um, small steps, bite-sized chunks. It's like so when you were 100%. personal training. I think you used to be personal training. Yeah, yeah. don't mention yeah. it much. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not. You don't want to go from standing start to the losing three stone in a, in a month. You know, it's that. What can we do in a month? What's a little bit that we can buy off? Yeah. What habits? What what actions things? can you do daily to, to over a period of time? Well, and it, and it is. It's the same with business. What can you do daily? that points you in the right direction and yes you'll go off off track and you'll get swayed and like weight loss people have holidays people binge on Christmas or whatnot but it's, it, as long as you're pointing in the right direction with business again you, you've got a target you've got a goal if you've got a clear vision of where you want to be and yes you might lose some staff which is always derails people and then you how do you get back on course and Otherwise, you can yeah you end up being reactive, and you, yeah. if you haven't got a plan on uh, on where you're going, it's that it's, roadmap, isn't it? It's amazing yeah. how many SMEs don't have a plan, and and what I mean by that is they might have been set up years and years ago, they've inherited a business or something like that, and 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 they're taking it on board, but they're just doing what they've always been taught to do. Yeah. Is that necessarily the right thing to do? So, I suppose part of our roles is to challenge them and say, okay, is that the right process? So. A particular example, one particular customer wanted a, a certain bit of automation, but I had to challenge him and say, well, is that actually the right thing to do? Are we over-engineering that yeah. bit? Are you really going to, so that will cost you 20 grand, but you might save five minutes. Is it really worth it? Right? So why don't you just get better with your updating your price list on the system, and then when the invoice comes in, it'll match. Mm. And it's just little simple tweaks, but because we're looking at it from a fresh pair of eyes and different perspective it's, it's not always obvious to them because they're at the coast. Yeah, they're living it, they, you know, they're living and breathing it, aren't they? Yeah, I think any business that is standing still, particularly in this environment, is going backwards. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, oh. Siri, Siri, we're we're going, going, she's getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> Siri disagrees. <laughs> Siri disagrees, yeah. didn't understand. But yeah, and I think because, yeah. as we know, most businesses are moving forward in some way. So if you're not from a technology perspective, then in reality, you, you fall behind. Yeah, because it, it, it's interesting that you see inflation has gone yeah. sky high, but then interest rates are staying low. So if you technically got money in the bank, it's going backwards. Yeah. So people with money, business owners, investors, all the, they're they're actively trying to give it to yeah. businesses to yeah. to make money because it's not doing anything in the bank. So it's like, okay, how do we? Yeah, how do we make our money work for us smarter? So again. People with a bit of coin can can do it that way, but and this is where again businesses that want to innovate or bring new products to market, they can get some really good business loans, grant funding, all that type of stuff. So there's more and more incentives for for businesses to be more efficient. But then on that, I'll be quite controversial. Has anybody followed any of the climate change stuff or any of the who's got an opinion on that? I throw that out there. Well, I, I was gonna, I, was gonna <laughs> I haven't been following it too closely, um, but I was, I was gonna take us back to what, one of the things you were saying about invoices coming, you know, electronically and then printing off. You know, it's probably a whole different podcast actually, the environmental thing. Mm. Um, but actually, the, just in itself, the whole, you know, getting receiving something electronic, printing it off, that's not ideal. You know, the power that's being used, paper toner, um, the storage, you know, the, the, you're heating, you know, you're keeping documents warm. What, what are you doing that for? You don't need to do it. all those sorts of things. So, um, yeah, it, it is another subject. Not, it is not, another podcast. It's not wastage, isn't it? In, in that process, so it, obviously the side of our business does manage print. 
and we talk to a lot of businesses about wasted prints, don't we? I mean, I remember when I used to do it and I used to go into schools or other businesses and literally, at the end of the day, there'd just be a load of printed paper that people hadn't collected and it's just going in the recycle bin. I'm like, when it blows. So we're using technology to actually stop that buffer. So again, they have to authenticate to release the print. So that, just that buffer there stops it just being wasted. And, and, and again, we, we can challenge a process. Do you actually really need to print that? And, and the irony is, in certain scenarios, print is still viable. It's still probably a decent, um, whether it be a delivery note, whether it be a proposal, whether it be some marketing literature, um, it's still viable, but it's the wasted. Uh, and that's what my interpretation of a lot of the environmental thing. There's a lot of businesses, a lot of companies, and again, some people point the big fingers to the governments and the big conglomerates and multinationals. And the, yes, okay, I think everybody's got to collectively do more, but it's all about waste more than anything. Like actually, let's be a bit more efficient. Mm. And the whole sustainability thing with technology is interesting because the, I think there's a bit of a shift now where really the, the latest and greatest laptop or iPhone or whatever. Do we really need it? Can we have a refurbished product? Can we keep our machines another year longer? Yeah. That type of thing. And and there's arguments to say that, obviously with the, the electric cars and whatnot, the amount of mining that we're having to do to pull out the minerals to actually make the lithium and whatever, to make these batteries, well, how much damage is that having as opposed to the effect of, and it, yeah, it swings well, around. Well, have controversial, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. Because oh. I, I want an electric car, but if I'm brutally honest, it's for tax benefits. Mm. I like my tech, but the tax incentives that the government are putting in place, you'd be crazy to look at a diesel car. Yeah, uh, yeah I agree. I agree. It's an interesting point, actually, environmental. We'll, we'll touch on a bit more. So when you're speaking to CFOs, CEOs, MDs, do they care? Do they talk about sustainability and environmental impact of what they do? I, I would say at the moment, I wouldn't say, rarely would I see it being high up on their agenda. Mm. I would say it's on there, mm. but I would, it might change after, you know, after COP26, but I certainly, you know, the experience I've had is it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an afterthought, really. And it's a bit of a, Tick in the box for tenders, hundred percent a lot of the time. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's that's the feeling I'm getting. I don't think anybody has actually bought the systems I'm selling for an environment. They they have it in the back of their mind. They they get it that it's a waste. Ultimately, if you scale it right back, I mean, the other day I went to see someone and they actually called the project paperless office. And we're we're always been controversial. That's been talked about since the fifties. <laughs> it's yeah. now twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Seventy years later, and yeah. we're like, is actually the irony is that yeah, people are actually probably printing more, but then that's off the back of there's more and more information in the world. There's more and more access to information in the world, and then it's a case of sometimes, and again, uh, we, we work with certain colleagues. They like to consume information in printed form. Mm. Now I've got a decent iPad now so I can actually read it better, I can zoom in so my eyes are <laughs> a little bit, I probably need glasses now but that, that's a different story but the the impact, I, I don't think, nobody's making commercial decisions on a solution that I've seen based on based on just the environmental right. bit. I that's think great. you're right, if, if, you, if we were selling into government and we were selling into I don't know, MOD or if at top level, I reckon it'll be written into the tender, I reckon there'll be boxes to tick. Um, because they're under pressure from governments to, um, yeah, to be more efficient. It's affected a couple of my businesses uh, that I look after that they have directly been making products with, say, gas, for example. Um, they've had to completely restructure and, and re-look at their manufacturing and what, what is going to be the future. How, is it going to be I don't know, batteries at home and solar panels on your roof, yeah. is it? Is it these air source heat pumps and whatever other energy type sources? So it's, um, yeah, what what are the alternatives? What does the future look like? And then you get you get other from a marketing perspective, like BrewDog, they yeah. say what, they're, they're, they're the world's only carbon neutral or uh, brewery out there and, and things like that, which again, they've always been very good at the marketing, but it's, it's you're right, are, is anybody really bothered. It's that offsetting thing that I don't get. So they yeah. say, well, we'll brew you a beer, but we'll plant, plant a tree. tree. 
somewhere in Norway. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then someone else will chop it down. So it, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like the environmental piece is is more of a nice byproduct. To at the, what at the moment, is I I think I, I think there'll be a bit more fallout and maybe a bit more structure post mm. this once everyone's you know gone back to their countries and had a bit of a you know. Debrief and said, right, how are we gonna how are we gonna do it? But at the moment, I think it's fundamental to many businesses' thoughts no. or, dis or or triggers to make a decision. Okay. Again, I think something catastrophic like COVID affect the whole world. It's a bit, but this is the irony: isolated incidents. So you look in, I don't know, California or Australia, and they've got bushfires. And you look in certain places, they've got floods. Yeah. Others, it's got, but he, yeah, and. <laughs> Unless it's going to be, I don't know, a global tsunami or something crazy. The, the pandemic affected everyone, so everybody had to do something about yeah. it, and everybody was in the same boat. When it's in certain countries, it's like, sorry, right, they can deal with it over there type thing. They don't collectively come up with a solution. But um, but you're right, it's, it's, I think all of it is pointing in one direction, isn't it? Digital isn't going away. Mm. That transformation piece and, and adopting digital, but... I guess what I was interested to know with a lot of business owners was more around, okay, so once you've given these tools to your staff, what are they going to do? How are they going to make your business better? So you've got, you've bought into the idea of it all, but what they keep talking about adding value, what does that, what does that look like? Yeah. What does that actually mean? What, how, how does humans add value to a business? But I mean, in the short term, from my perspective, it should free me up to actually have more conversations with my customers, get to know them a bit better, understand their problems better. Because robots and, and systems, they, they, they can't replace humans from an empathy perspective, they can't, from a communication perspective, they can't sit there and, and, and understand you on a, and connect with you on that level. So that's what, it sh for me, that's what I'd love to reduce my admin a little bit more, but again, the, uh, well, you don't like admin full stop, what are you talking I hate about? admin, that's why I sell, I sell. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a good motivator, yeah. Okay, so, I can summarise, but uh, it's been a long conversation, but yeah, so trends in the market, a little bit of environmental, but we think that's more of a kind of byproduct. Down the line, I think that'll become more prominent. But we're seeing challenges in terms of a bit of a hangover still from COVID, some yeah. businesses actually coming Thriving. out like a bit well, some, some struggling. We're seeing issues in terms of uh, inflation and in terms of getting the right people, the right staff yeah. and, and wage inflation that comes with that. Um, and industries looking towards digital, looking towards automation to try and solve some of those problems. I think that's the kind of theme that's come out of today. Yeah. Is that Definitely. fair? Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you for, for joining us for the last sort of 45 minutes or so. Um, yeah, just to echo, I'm, I'm Steve Motley, I'm the Head of Digital at Spectrum Digital. Uh, Neil? Yep, Neil Wells from IT Spectrum, uh, Digital Automation Consultant. John Manu, Digital Automation Consultant as well at Spectrum. And this has been tomorrow's workplace today. So thank you for your time. And if you want to get in touch with us, uh, visit www.itspectrum.co.uk or connect with any of us on LinkedIn.